the sexiest thing in the entire world is being really smart. Welcome to Smart is Sexy, the podcast where we discuss self-development, love, business, spirituality, and becoming a smarter, sexier human. Here we are. We took like a month off, but we're back. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a lot of singing. I don't really know what's going on with me. I'm having a weird, I'm having like a weird day. Okay. But like a happy day, not weird in like a bad way. I'm just like feeling a little bit loopy. Okay. Well, you guys, we're back. Welcome back. Your daily, weekly dose of happiness has returned. I'm sure everyone is as excited as we are yes. to be here. I am your host, Kelsey. Wow, look at that. And I'm Celeste. Welcome to our show, y'all. If you haven't yet, hit subscribe, leave us a review, send to a friend. This helps us continue making content and helps us expand because we're still on the newer side yeah. um, compared to some people. So this is really helpful yeah, for like, us. Yeah, like when do podcasts like pop off, pop off? I don't know. They say it takes 10 years to be an overnight success. <laughs> But I don't know. We got the, 10 more years of me talking? Well, I don't know if it's like 10 years. I just know it takes time. Oh, I said 10 years of we me talking. We actually are two now because it was our second oh. birthday on like January 19th or something like that. Because that was the first the first episode we ever put out was January 18th or 19th, that's like cute. two we years ago. We didn't even celebrate. I know. Yeah, but we're two. Wow, that's so fun. Happy two. <laughs> well, happy two. <laughs> happy, happy two. Not happy second birthday. Happy, happy two. two. Um, okay, well... Just like jumping right on in, um, I, 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 okay, really quick before we get into all of this, I cannot stand when these TikTokers go on and on and they're like, all right, you guys, let's get into it. I'm like, well, no, that's why we're here to watch the video. Just, just stop saying, let's get into it. Just do it. So, <laughs> no, I, I feel just, you. I just had to I add feel that. like it is a good, like, how else are you supposed to transition though? Yeah, but you're on a TikTok video. So just like, we don't need to say, hey guys let's get into it just say what you need to say this is 30 seconds i feel you but i also am like i kind of i kind of wait for them to say let's get into it so oh, i know so we're gonna like get it. into okay. it okay how else me. am i gonna know we're gonna get into it <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what comes next okay i mean i'm also aware i'm gonna get so much hate because these days everything i say on this podcast gets so much hate on youtube and everyone yeah they're just like unhappy that i have a and you have, have an opinion. opinion. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of so much hate, though, I'm actually really happy that we're coming back to doing Good News Minute because I feel like the news and the media has been so negative lately. I know, obviously, like, it's always negative just because, like, America thrives on yeah. that. But lately, every time I go online or see any headlines, see Twitter, any social media, it's so negative. It's, like, recession and this and political and this and outbreak and cases and sickness. And it's just, like... I would be super curious to see what percentage of American media is bad news. I mean, it has to be like 99%. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I also like, I get that like we have to be aware of what's going on in the world mm -hmm. so we can do better. But also, I don't think there's any harm in celebrating the good things and talking yeah. about the good things either like I don't yeah. think that's a bad thing no I agree and also we talked about this the other day because obviously as business owners it's like you have to pay attention to the the economic climate and the political climate but I was like I told you I was like I'm gonna be delusional I don't care in my world everything is great ignorance is bliss <laughs> what you know like you're right we have to be aware of it but we can't internalize it yeah we can't intake it and no. it's like I cannot wake up every single day with like loom and doom hanging over my head no not so loom and I, doom no so I'm delusional. I'm like, recession where? I'm rich. You know, <laughs> like I'm just putting it out there because no, I'm like. I like that because I think it is it is really hard. Like if you focus so much on the negative, then that's all you're going to be living yeah. in. And even though things are challenging right now and there is a lot of like bad, terrible things happening in the world, there is right. still a lot to be grateful for, in Always. at least in my own personal life right. that I can focus on. And hopefully that will expand. I think we can always all find something to be grateful for. And also I just like physically like cannot like do my life if I'm always just super triggered or upset yeah. or frantic or worried. Like we have so much stress as it is to be an adult, also to own a business, to have people that work for you. Like there's so much stress as it is. Like I have to believe it's going to be fine. I, I don't have a choice. So I'm going to be delusional. So yeah, I, I like it. I'm I not like mad it. at that. That's, no. that's where I'm at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyways, good news minute, because around here we focus on the good things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In this world. Good news minute. I went, um, 
to Sundance Mm -hmm. and had a really fun weekend with Mans. He was filming some like B-roll stuff for this documentary that was Mm -hmm. um, screening. And we got to see the documentary um, called Uncharitable. Mm -hmm. It's based um, um, on a book. And the documentary was incredible. But the next day he was doing some stuff and I went with him because he needed someone to, um, while he filmed, Mm -hmm. he needed someone to drive the, uh, what's it called? Snowmobile. So Mm -hmm. I got to drive the snowmobile while he filmed. Oh, that's cool. But then we were filming dog sledding. So Mm -hmm. the guys were like, Oh, do you want to go? Oh, it was so much fun. Yeah. That's so cool. The best time. Loved it. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, I, this, so this you just fun. sit there and the dogs pull you? Is this how this works? Yeah. So I didn't actually get to like, I got to sit in the dog sled. Mm-hmm. The person, the there's actually someone who is like, knows how to like speak to the dogs and has trained them. And <laughs> okay, like, he's like good. their person. So he's, they, there, yeah. he's on it with you. Got it. And then I got to like sit in the dog sled and uh-huh. like film. It was so it much fun. It looked really cool. It was honestly super. Yeah. It, it, it is incredible how quiet it is. Yeah. And I was sitting there being like, this this is like what life is supposed to be like. You're yeah. supposed to like experience things like this. And you're mm-hmm. supposed to do new things and try new things and like yeah. live. You yeah. are supposed to be living. It right. was so much fun. Yeah, that is really cool. If anybody missed it, go on Kelsey's Instagram because she posted a reel. Yeah, of her. I'm gonna make like yeah. a like a at like put more stuff up. But it was it was great. Yeah. It was just like such a cool experience to be like wow, this is, yeah. this is so different mm-hmm. that not very many people get yeah. to do something like this. Right. Okay. So yeah, cool. that's fine. Sick. Um, okay. Mine is that my librarian dreams have come true. Sort oh. of. Um, we started a book club. Yay. It's the smartest, sexy book club. I'm super excited. So for anyone who knows us, you know, Kelsey and I are both big readers. Um, and like a fun fact is that I actually wanted to be a librarian when I was like, uh, 18, 19, and the library wouldn't hire me because I, they said I needed a degree in library science. Which who and knew you needed a degree? Who knew? That? And so uh, at the time, I lived right next to a nightclub called Hyde. And so I was like, well, library won't hire me. I'm just going to go work here because it's like right outside my house. And that was at the beginning of like our journey into nightlife. And then after that, we were both working in the industry and like we started Viper right around this time. And you never got to be a librarian. I never got to be a librarian. <laughs> but then we started this podcast and then this podcast birthed a book club. <laughs> and now I get to semi live my dreams in like a more um, modern way. Yeah. I'm like a modern librarian. You okay. Know, I, I have a book club. Okay. Yep. So that's my good news minute. In case you missed it, we started a book club um, and we are now Audible Influencers, which yes. is like the most exciting so thing. So fun. So technically, you guys, today's episode is brought to you by Audible. And when you click the link in our bio or on this video, wherever you're watching it, you get a month free on us and then you get one book. You get one book and then you also have access to all of the free books that mm-hmm. audible has on there so like you get one credit you'll be able to purchase i mean i hope that when you do audible if you yeah. sign up you purchase our book that we recommended for the yeah. month so you can be a part of yeah. our um book club book club but also you guys you guys don't have to use audible if you prefer readings i know some people do yeah. you can also purchase the book so that you're able because i've had totally. a couple of people ask me like do i have to do audible in order to join the book yeah, club and no. i was like no not at all we are just being kind and offering you a free yeah. book so but also like take us up on that you guys because like just yeah. get on there get the free book and yeah. then and and then you don't yeah. have to even join the book club if you don't want and to. audiobooks i'm a big physical reader but as of this year i have been giving audiobooks a shot for the moments where i can't physically read so so for example, when I'm getting ready or if I'm in traffic or anything like that, I can play a book and then it's like sometimes I'll even um, do like half reading and half audible, whatever. But I, I like because you can't always sit down with a book. You no, know? and it does take up. It sounds bad, but it's like we're I think a lot of people don't necessarily always have the time to sit down and read. So right. if we're able to like. You can't read while you drive, but right. I can sit and listen to a book right. while I'm in the car yeah. and learn something new and, you know, expand, expand my horizons. Yes, you can. So I'm really, really excited. Um, we did already announce it. So we've already announced the first book. Yeah. We've already finished the first book. Yes. Um, it was Atomic Habit. Atomic Habits by James Clear. He also reads the book on Audible, mm-hmm. which 
is a very like the narrator plays a huge role in mm-hmm. your experience with the books and he I was agree. a great narrator he was a great one very matter of fact mm-hmm. his inflection was good yeah. he was he like i didn't feel like i was bored he wow maybe he, you're the librarian you're coming for my job hi oh you job should. wrecker spruce up <laughs> whatever brush spruce up, up. Or brush up oh. or whatever well, it is no but I do agree with you I think he was great and actually so I I, I had read uh the power of habit before which yeah. is like the you know like the OG habit book this is like the new big habit book um and I'm already a big fan of the like role that habits play because it's actually very interesting how much of what we do all day is really just our habits mm-hmm. it's like our driving force like you think you're making decisions but you're mostly not you're mostly living in habit yeah and so um I will say like the book was really good I really really enjoyed it yeah and also just so you guys know we're not going to be like turning once a month our episodes into like a book review no. the whole episode this one just made a big impact and I felt like it was good to talk about yeah. based off of new year's resolutions that's so true so, yeah because I uh, there's gonna be some books that we touch on for a minute totally. we'll talk about it we always want your guys's feedback on what right. you guys thought about the book and what your thoughts are yeah but I definitely felt like this yeah. about habits was like a better conversation and how it has really just from reading the book how the small shifts I'm trying to make daily right. that's why I like this book because I felt like it was so easy to implement like I you know and it wasn't it wasn't super textbooky it was more like here's how you can implement this here's how this is relevant in your life and uh I really especially if you read it at the beginning of the year because you're like okay I want to know I know I want to do better right like at the beginning of the year everyone's like I'm going to be in my best shape and I'm going to be the smartest yeah. version of myself and the the happiest and the fittest. And like we all, we make these like crazy New Year's resolutions, which I honestly didn't really make any because I don't really believe in that. I'm like, you can do that tomorrow. Like what's stopping you from going to the gym tomorrow? You know, you're going to wait till the first. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I made some for myself and they weren't necessarily like resolutions. They were just things I was like, I want to accomplish this, right. this coming year. Right. So like I want to knit a blanket yeah I am gonna learn how to knit you. because I think it's important to like yeah it also I learned that it helps with anxiety mm-hmm. when you're feeling anxious I could see that for sure so I was like started. okay I'm going to mm-hmm. you know because because I sometimes can have a crazy amount of anxiety I'm like okay I'm gonna learn how to knit I wanted to get involved with a charity this year mm-hmm. and like do something that really helped others yeah don't know what that is yet but we're we're yeah. moving into it but I made a list of things yeah that that I wanted to accomplish. Now that wasn't like every single day I'm going to go to the gym. It was just like this year I want to hit, I would like, these are some goals I want to hit. Totally. That's what I did too. I did intentions. Like one of mine was to lighten up. This one's challenging for me. I'm really trying to be light. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like you've done a great job. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to like, I feel like this past year with, I feel like responsibility and like turning 27 just like smacked me in the face. I feel like, I don't know, 27 to me, like late 20s, I was like, oh my fucking God, I'm an adult. And that freaked me out. And then I think I started taking things so seriously because I was so panicked. I was like, who, there's no adult or adult in this room. You know, it's just me. (laughs) Okay. I'm in charge. I'm supervising myself, which is terrifying. And so I was like, okay. But then this year I was like, I do want to like still lighten up and like still have fun. Cause like last year I was really, really tough on myself. I was like, I'm not going out. I'm getting up super early. Like, and I still believe in having good habits and we'll talk about that. Of course. But I also was like, I also can lighten up a little bit and still enjoy life. Yeah. I'm working on that though. It's difficult for me because I'm like really rigid and like I should be doing, I should be doing this. Um, And then the other thing I was like, and I want to go to Europe this year. Those are kind of the only two things that I put because I was like, I already know my career goals are. I already know, you know, and also like I hadn't really been super diligent about my workouts for the past like four months. So I was like, let's not be unrealistic and pretend that it's just going to happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I'll I'll do better in that area, but I'm also not going to be like, okay, out of nowhere, I'm now Iron Man, you know? Yeah. So (laughs) it was like just a few resolutions. No, I feel you. So, uh, so yeah, so that's why I really like was excited to read this book because he makes such good points. They're so easy. And I like, you know, I had a few favorites in there that, and you had a few too that we can like go over, but, um, yeah. Well, I think my favorite, and I think also your favorite, we talked about this was the getting 1% better every day counts for a lot in Mm -hmm. the long run. Yeah. Because you can look back at your year. Mm Mm-hmm. From whatever you start. It doesn't need to be from January right. 1st. It can be from whenever you start. But you can look back in a year if you make 1% mm-hmm. 
changes every single day and look back and be like, I yeah, am so much, compound. Yes. Yeah. I'm so much further along now than I was a year ago, even yeah. though I didn't have to like, I didn't run 10 mm-hmm. miles every single day from the jump, right. but I like built up to my mm-hmm. goal. Like that's a, that's he, a good feeling. He makes like such a good point in the book. He's like, we overestimate the ability to change everything and we underestimate how impactful it is to just change one thing yes you know because when it's like one percent it compounds over a year and like you slowly get better at whatever it is you're doing and so yeah you might not run 10 miles tomorrow but if you start tomorrow with one percent more than you're doing today then over time like that compounds and then you're hitting your goal yeah so yeah I love that because I'm like that's so true I feel like every time people are like I'm gonna go change everything instead of just changing you know this one thing yes Um, I I like that a lot yeah that was a great point he made the other point that he made that I was like wow this is so good is he talks about how like it's not about your goal it's about your system this was like my favorite thing which really made me sit and think about the system in mm-hmm. which I do how I've my my whole life mm-hmm. yeah because your whole life is a system yeah so I'm yeah. like wait why am I why is this causing me to create this habit like yeah. what like what why are my habits my habits mm-hmm. yeah and he makes like such good points he's like if you just say my goal is to get rich Okay, well, that doesn't do anything for you. But if you say my system is I get up every day and I work on this for four hours and then I do this for one hour and then I put this out, he's like, well, now you're getting somewhere because you have a system. And he was saying how like we rise and fall to just wherever our systems are at. And I thought that was such a good point. I'm like, that's like so underestimated. I also liked how he talked about not to like focus on like the goal so much Mm -hmm. because it the whole when he was like, what did he what did he say exactly he was like the goal is not to be rich Mm -hmm. the goal is to like be really successful Mm -hmm. in what you do every single day Mm -hmm. and then you will get to the point of being rich right 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 like and I liked and I'm probably butchering how he said that but I really liked that Mm -hmm. because it makes you think like no I just need to be working hard right no and I yeah he makes like such good points for all of those things and even so throughout the whole book he talks about any type of habit. It could be like physical, emotional, mental, anything, smoking cigarettes, going to the gym, Mm -hmm. working, making money, all sorts of things. And something that he talks about, which I've actually noticed in my own life is like, it's not about saying, oh, I'm going to pick up this habit and I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym every single day. It's like, you have to assume the identity of somebody who does that. Even in it, it makes a lot of sense. Cause I think too, like with work, if I'm like, oh, I'm going to go, you know, close this many deals or make this much money. But if I don't feel that way, if I don't feel the identity of being a leader or a deal closer or something like that, then I'm not going to, I'm not going to do those things. You know what I mean? Like those are not going to be my systems because you don't actually, you're not in the identity of somebody who does it. And that's like a lot of times why our habits, like we break them. It's like, because you say, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to get super fit. But you don't assume the identity of someone who goes to the gym every single day. Yeah, and that's why you're you're failing. Yeah. And he, he says it. He's like, I'm going to be super fit. Mm-hmm. So that means that you're not fit right now, which makes yeah. it harder for you to be that person because right. you're not it. Right. So I actually did it the other day. I, I love being in a relationship, but it has <laughs> made me a little bit lazy with my workouts. Totally. Same. And... <clears throat> that's okay. I'm honestly super fine with it. I But I also enjoy working out. So yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get back into like really being motivated to be yeah. at the gym. And I did it the other day. I used his thing mm-hmm. of I am a really athletic person mm-hmm. or physically fit person. Right. So I'm on the treadmill and I was like, I do not even want to be here. I'm like yeah. five minutes into this jog. And I like jogging. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm five minutes in this jog and I want to go home. But I was like, you know what? No, I'm a really physically fit, healthy person yeah. and physically fit, healthy people mm-hmm. push themselves yeah. so that they can continue to be physically and health, physically right. fit and healthy. No, it's, and he makes like such a good point. He says like, let's say you're trying to quit smoking and somebody offers you a cigarette. The difference is saying, no, thanks. I'm trying to quit versus saying, no, thanks. I'm I not a smoker. smoker. And I'm like, that's like such a good point. You change your identity. And then that's how those habits now become, you know, habits because you're assuming the identity of somebody who already has them. And I was like, that is such a good point. Gain, it, honestly, that whole, that little bit of information that you yeah. can take from the book is really a game changer. It really is. 
Completely. You know, and he, yeah. throughout the whole book, he talks about casting votes. And I was like, I'm going to use this because he's like, when you go to the gym, you're casting votes for somebody who is fit. When you show up early to work, you're casting votes for someone who is, you know, excited yes. about work or is a boss or, you know, whatever. When you um, don't smoke cigarettes, you're casting votes for someone who is not a smoker. And I was like, the casting votes is good because then it's like, even if you only do a few minutes of a good habit, you're still casting votes for that. You're still working towards yeah. that. He makes like such a good argument for just making super small changes. You know, yeah. the book, the book really is really it freaking really is good. So good. I he, know. He, I, he I, knew, I thought job. it was going to be good, but it was, it actually was better than I expected. Yes, it will. And it's probably why it's like a New York times bestseller. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Although I feel like every book is a New York times bestseller. Cause every book I pick up says New York yeah, times bestseller. Yeah, this one just really like popped off a, mm-hmm. a ton. Like I was like, oh, yeah. okay. Like good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Um, he also talks a lot about, which is something that we say often is done over perfect. Mm-hmm. And just like, do something yeah it doesn't need to be perfect and you don't need to beat yourself up over it but just do something yeah well and he it's the same thing that we've said on the pod like you think that oh i'm gonna do this when it's at its best but then it's never gonna come out because it will never be at its best like you have to just do it now because it's not gonna be perfect you don't need to change 20 things and you can and you can perfect it over time of course but no that is literally like I liked it. I I really did. I know. And I also, I didn't get a chance to do this. This was my bad, but I really want to get onto Mm atomichabits.com and do his little worksheets that he Mm -hmm, has. That he mentioned. Because I'm thinking like, that would be kind of fun to sit there and like really focus on like writing down Mm -hmm. the, when he talks about like, oh, when I go to the gym, mm-hmm. then I will get to sit and watch mm, my TV, favorite like the TV reward show. Like the situation. reward thing yeah. and make your habits attractive and right. re- create a reward system right. for habits to make them exciting mm-hmm. so you want to do that. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I know one thing he says, which like I don't do this on purpose because I know like I when I want to avoid something, I don't do this, but he talks about how um, you need to set your commitments when you're in the right mindset. So if you know that you like um, don't want to be on social media, like if you know social media is a bad habit for you and it's distracting you, then have like a friend or an assistant change your password every Monday morning so that you're not on it throughout the week and they give it to you at your password back on the weekend or book a class, book a workout class when you're in the when you're in the mindset of it. And then so that you have to show up because he says like, don't let yourself wait until like your willpower is there. Like make the decision and then commit to it. Yes. Which is like so true. (laughs) So something that I think a lot of us do, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but I do think a lot of people and I am at fault is by not feeling very good about myself, say Mm -hmm. like, I haven't been working out. I haven't been eating healthy. I then will go on and book a workout class and it's like a, but then weirdly it's like a punishment. Right. And that is making that working out is now a habit that I don't want. He talks about that too. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, yeah. So it's like the back we say like in the right mindset Mm -hmm. because then, then, then it's like, this is creating a punishment when working out isn't a punishment for me, at least it's like, this isn't a punishment. This is something that you're rewarding your body with. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's so true. And I was just like thinking about, I honestly took a lot away from the book and like Mm -hmm. things that I, I feel like we knew a lot of them, but it's like such a good reminder, you know, and they were like so easy to implement. Well, and the whole system thing, it does Mm -hmm. help you think about like when I'm doing certain things, I'm thinking, okay, wait, this is something I want to continue doing all the time. Yeah. So what am I doing right now that I can right. make this an right. exciting thing that I'm right. enjoying? And it does become just yeah. like washing my hair or turning on the light when you walk totally. into a room, which is the, one of the examples right. he uses. Right. Yeah. And I think one thing that I really liked that I, I can't stop thinking about since I read it is he talks about like lag time. Mm-hmm. Like everything has a lag time. What you eat today is not going to make or break your body today but it's gonna be in a few weeks when it's like you know accumulation of everything you've eaten the past few weeks or the few months or what you do at work today might not make a difference you might just you know plant a seed but in a month that might become a deal that you close and so he talks about lag time and it goes in both directions either you can make a good decision today you won't you won't see the benefit you're not going to reap it but there's a lag time and then there's a lag time in the opposite direction because if you make the wrong ones or you continue with your bad habits in a few weeks, in a month, those are when they compound. And then at that point it is, you are going to have to deal with it. Which 
you and I have talked about so many times because we are so big, especially with business, Mm -hmm. we're so big on longevity and like not doing fast deals and fast money and building relationships. So it's like, it is stuff that we know. I just need to also implement those things into my personal life I know, and not just be so focused on the work aspect of it because there are a lot of ways that I can be a better individual on a personal level, not just on my, on a professional level. Right, right, right. No, of course. It's always like as a whole. Yeah. Yes. So those were definitely, those are some of my favorite takeaways, but overall, I mean, I was like, okay, I can easily make some of these changes. And like, I feel like when you read it to you, just have it in your head. You're like, oh shit. Like I felt like (laughs) it was really like motivating. Yeah. I was like, yes, I can. Also the other thing too, and this kind of just goes back to, I know so many people fall off of like their new year's resolutions Mm -hmm. or your new year's intentions. And I think what happens is like, just because you fall off for a week, doesn't mean you can't just like hop back on and keep going. Like, people just fall off and like, well, I already blew it. So it's like the rest of this time just goes to shit. And it's like, no, 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 we can, you can easily just be like, "Mm, I didn't have a great week of working out or eating good or depending whatever it is that you're struggling with, then just go, you just get to hop back on it the very next day. Somebody actually had tweeted this, which it was like, not that it was like corny by any means. It was just like, okay, but it was, it made a good point. She was like, um, we all think that like, oh, I haven't done this hobby for so long. I forgot about it. I can't go back. And she was like, but you forgot your hobbies. Your hobbies didn't forget you. Meaning like you can always go back, yes. you know, you can go, yeah. you can go do whatever you want yeah. at any point. Like your hobby doesn't, your, your days at the gym don't care that you didn't come back or, you know, whatever it was that you were doing. Yeah. Like you're the only person who's really beating yourself up. Over Literally. That. Like yeah, no, no one else is upset. So narrative. you get, you get totally. to just be like, Hey, fell off, get to hop right back on right. And, and not even like really skip a beat. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Those were all my favorite points. And he also said something else that I just think I needed to hear because I feel like today, sometimes I'm like, I, we're such like longevity people. Like I work towards like the bigger goals. Mm-hmm. I work towards like the long-term stuff. So I do think sometimes it's hard when I feel like people are like virtually overnight successes because things go viral so fast. And like, I don't really live in that world. So I'm like, okay, am I like not doing anything? But he makes such a good point. He talks about how like you have to do something so well for years or for 80% of the time and then you cross over like a critical threshold and that's when something expands. That's when it comes out and everyone's like, oh, you know, wow, you're you're an overnight success really, but the whole time you were building up to it. But I kind of just needed that reminder because I had been feeling like, okay, so all of you are just like – Everyone's just blown up overnight, you know? Yeah, like, because realistically, like, what, TikTok's been around for two and a half years? I don't I, even know. I maybe, think. Yeah. Or three years, maybe. So it's like, it's really hard when you're seeing all of these TikTok influencers just pop up. And, like, yeah. I'm not hating on them. I'm just saying totally. as a person who has built nothing into something, yeah. it is challenging then when you're like, I'm not seeing yeah. the the success at the rate that other mm-hmm. people are seeing it, you do feel a little bit like, well, what yeah. am I doing wrong? No, 100%. And we just have so much access into like seeing everyone else's, uh, we have so much access into seeing everyone else's life that it just like warps your perception. Like it warps your perspective on reality. Yes. Like I don't think I was meant to like know what everyone is doing and what the, everyone is well, getting ready with and were. everyone is, you know. <gasps> okay. So like, a little bit of a sidebar, <laughs> but I was thinking about this today when I, I was on TikTok. I I like TikTok to like scroll and I do I love the cooking recipes, yeah. you guys. I'm like really obsessed. I cook yeah. a lot of things on from TikTok. But I was on there and of course like, you know, the makeup influencers come up and yeah. then I'm saving like, "Oh, okay, this is a different tip." But I'm like, "How does everyone constantly have the best makeup product ever to it's, ever be using?" I'm like, "I am so tired them. keeping up with trends." Yeah. And like I'm so ha- do your do yeah. your thing, you guys. But I'm like I as a as my individual yeah. self am so tired of figuring out the best new way to contour my no, face. No, and I think it's like <laughs> such a I really and that's why I really like the point he made because I struggle with that because I'm like everyone's like you you know do content like as an entrepreneur and I, you know and obviously we have the podcast yeah. and we've talked about this before. You know, I have a love hate relationship with it, but like I find myself I'm like okay, why am I comparing myself to you? You probably live in. Arkansas I'm never gonna meet you why am I sitting here being like oh she has this and I'm like I don't want to do this anymore I want to go for a walk and so when I and so sometimes I was like is my work 
meaningless because you guys have millions of views for literally doing nothing, just getting ready in your bathroom. Meanwhile, I'm over here like employing 140 people trying to change an industry and I'm like, and it doesn't seem to matter. So it just, it kind of did get in my head for a little. Yeah. And so when he said, he was like, you know, you cross the critical threshold and then that's when you expand. And I was like, I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that there is purpose in the long term, you know, and the and working hard at something. Well, and for you know, with like the negative habits, yeah. the scrolling on social media, yes, you can scroll for an hour one day and it's not, yeah. probably not going to do a whole lot, but time after it time, compounds. Yeah. it does compound. And you're like, after and then you're a while, like, like losing I, time. I'm like, yes. Oh, I'm like not reading as much. I'm not like going on walks. I'm not seeing the sun. I'm just like, cause you get addicted to it, Yes, you know? And it's like, you're getting such quick dopamine cause you know, you can scroll and laugh or scroll and be relatable or scroll and this, like, you know, and it's just quick, just scroll. Mm-hmm. And so I've been having my own issues with that. And I'm like, okay, like I want to put stuff out, but I'm also like, I need to get the fuck off this app. So I don't know. I've been going back and forth. I mean, but. I delete Instagram. Yeah. I can easily get off TikTok. It's not something that like is Same. It, it doesn't bug me as such. Instagram yeah. can I can catch yeah. myself scrolling. So I will delete the app from my phone. Mm-hmm. So lo siento to people who have um, DM'd me and then wait like a week for responses just because the app's not on my phone. So I don't see things because I I try to take a break as much as I can. I get on, I'll do like a quick post for like work related things, but I really do try to like stay off of it and be present in my life because I want to experience more things like dog sledding. I agree. Yeah. I'm with you. All right. Well, that was our recap of Atomic Habits. If you haven't read it yet, definitely check it out and use our link on Audible because you get a free month and a free book. Um, Okay. But to wrap up on a more fun note, what's your sexy sexy? Um, Okay. Wow. This has like been kind of a challenge for me lately. Um, Okay. My sexy sexy is going to be <laughs> to me go first uh yeah could okay. you <laughs> okay mine is when you are dating someone and then something you both just like die of laughter like uncontrollably i think that's like so cute and so like innocent and so fun yeah you know like yes. when and it could be anything but I, when you're just like both like just dying of laughter, yes i think it's really cute i like that 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 actually sparked mine so thank you i appreciate that (laughs) um okay so obviously we just kind of got back from like holiday season Mm -hmm. we went to man's parents house we went to see my family Mm -hmm. so that was required a lot of road trips Mm -hmm. and long road trips um but i think i used to not really enjoy road tripping very much Mm because i'm like oh let's just get there i have so much fun going on road trips Mm -hmm. with him so yeah. my sexy sexy is like us in the car with our snacks, listening to crime junkies. Yeah, that's so and cute. And just yeah. like the dogs are in the back seat mm-hmm. and we're having fun. We're laughing and it's just yeah. the two of us. And we, we just like yeah. for eight hours cause we've been in the car for eight hours mm-hmm. and we're like, I honestly don't mind it. Aww. I don't mind it at all. It's, yeah. it's really fun. That's cute. And he is, I just, I just like him. So yeah. those, that's my sexy. Oh, thing. okay. Cute. Okay. There yeah. you did have one. I did have one. It sparked it from you. You're welcome. All right. You guys, as always, thanks for being here. Do you want to say your spiel? Do you want me to say your spiel? (laughs) You guys, go on to YouTube. Hit subscribe. (laughs) I'm really, you guys, I'm really obsessed with YouTube right now. I'm just like, I really need to figure out a system for hitting my goal of 1,000 subscribers. Yes. Oh my God. You guys help us get to 1,000 subscribers. That's our goal. And that's like so cute and innocent and you should help. Yeah, yeah, like just do your civic duty. Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, and then on Instagram and TikTok and everywhere else, you can find us at Smart is Sexy, and we'll be back every Wednesday. Thanks. Bye.